I would like to procure the bag. I want to be a rich bitch. Penthouse door man. Money, 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 rich bitch. Hey, hey, give me that bag. Rich bitch. You're so rich. Uh, pay me. Not us both wearing pink and being twinsies for this episode. Obsessed with both of us. I look like Pepto Bismol, though. You look, you look more regal. I look like an antacid. What are you talking? <laughs> it's a crop top, honey. Like, fucking, I mean, this doesn't. Shit. Honestly, technically, this is too because it doesn't fit <laughs> anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so oh we're my cropping. god! I bought this in London, and I really loved it, and it was kind of a wishful purchase anyway because it was already kind of like want want, and. Um, <laughs> Then after it was like washed wah, once wah. or twice, it was like wah wah, R.I.P. But it still looks good from the chest up, so I will wear it. And you can all imagine that this actually fits, and that you didn't just see my stomach hanging over my pants. Wah. Uh, She's I having think an I got ugly this day. From a thrift store. What do you mean? Shut up! You're not I'm, having an ugly day. No, I totally am, but it's totally okay. We're gonna talk about my birthday. Let's talk about your birthday. I'm ago. ugly and old. Yay! <laughs> I'm totally not. No, um, you're finally my age. Please, you are younger 22. than me. Twenty two. Not as, Yeah, and that's actually not true. That is correct. No, you are younger than me. Are we? The, oh wait, no, we talked about this on the cruise. We're the same age. Yeah. By like a month. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome. So to speaking. My, speaking welcome of to uh, twenty seven. <laughs> god i fucking wish the the amount of people i would be willing to murder to look the way i did at 27 is vast. it's vast. i hope i'm not part of it you certainly are not (laughs) i have a list then i'm cool with it i'm kidding i don't don't have a list i don't have a murder list to turn the clocks back unless someone comes and offers me a lot of money to make a deal with the devil and all that other shit and then in which case i will look amazing overnight and then I'll live forever. Anyway, <laughs> this isn't the Vampires. Illuminati, I promise. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So no, it's I definitely did... not. Let's talk about your birthday. <laughs> it's definitely not. Let's. <laughs> um, what is that? I loved like a... it. <laughs> um, I loved your birthday. It I loved really my unhinged. birthday too. It was so fun and unhinged. And so, like for listeners, I have lived in New York for eighteen years, and I've never once taken a Circle Line cruise. I have always wanted to do it. It's one of those things. It's like ugh, tourists. But like, yeah. also, I want to be on the water and like look at my city and learn about my city. And that I'll, is I'll why be a candle on the water. <laughs> Um, and that's why I suggested to my little close circle of friends that we should all go take a circle line cruise. It's like 40 something dollars. <clears throat> There's a bar on yep. board. They have kind of yep. mediocre food. It's, it's, it's yeah. gas station food. Let's be real. Yeah, it's true. But, um, um, and but the on people, the water. So it's the a people, water station. The people are not yeah. from here. And it's very just like choose your own adventure. So, of course, the day that I picked to do this, it was pouring down rain. (laughs) Mother Nature uh, was like, enjoy. Mother Nature was like, you don't deserve this day. And, uh, you know, it was cold and wet, but I I had such a good time. Everyone was such a good sport about it. We got some great photos. My best friend from high school came up from Philadelphia um, for her her anniversary because it is her divorce anniversary or it's her wedding anniversary but she's since been divorced seven years and uh congrats gal her and that's the other thing too she got married the day after my birthday on my 30th birthday in puerto rico so i was in puerto rico with bobby on my birthday for my best friend's wedding it was such an epic weekend we had the best time so Uh, it was worth it divorce or otherwise (laughs) yeah whatever yeah um But yeah, so we did the Circle Line cruise and I was expecting, you know, because we want the best, you know, I always want the best for New York. And I think that's why everyone yes. in New York is always like, the fuck is wrong with you, New York? Because we love it so much. Yeah. We want it. We want it to thrive because we know that it can be such a great thing. And so mm-hmm. we got on this boat and it was one of those moments where I was like, come on, I want you to thrive because I know that you could be such a great thing. And the, um, <laughs> the tour guide who was 700 years old, um, was either and depressed. drunk or depressed or had Both? Alzheimer's or all of the above. Because 
after we got past, I truly what I think it is is he took an edible and it didn't kick in until we hit the Statue of Liberty. Uh... Because up until the Statue of Liberty, it was pretty fine. It was there were holes in it. There was like, what are you of talking course. about? He but showed like, us nine eleven photos to start. So right. there you go. But it was like you know you 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 laminated. You can't you can't talk about every single building on the shoreline and its historical context at the speed in which you're traveling on a boat. So I like was oh, no. kind of I was For, forgiving right. I was forgiving the commentary. I was like kind of overlooking like what was about to happen, and then once we got past the Statue of Liberty, it just went so off the rails. And the thing is, like, I'm a West Side kid, right? Like, I want to be on the West yeah. Side at all times. And so, to Same. me, I don't really know a whole lot about the East Side. And I lived there for five years up in Spanish Harlem, which I fucking loved. And yeah, but like, I also didn't really learn much outside of like Carl Schultz Park or whatever. Right. Um, exactly. Same. When things. I lived there for three years, yeah, the <gasps> East Side. Yeah. yeah. So this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we're like passing the south street seaport which like has i'm sure a very interesting history um, it does you know like there was the there was a reservoir over there that i know of that people yeah. would would die from drinking out of because it was like sewage water plus rain water plus river water it was like it was a whole mess um and that is ha, was filled in and that was it's now what we know as the lower east side south street seaport um, Gorge. Yeah. and of course then the Fulton like, Fish Market, the the, the, like the all of those things, port, the, all the, the, all the, the things, all the merchants, there. everything, right. yeah. And then of course there's just like Roosevelt Island, which had like the hospital Ugh. on one end and the insane asylum on the other. Yeah, end. The that Brooklyn, crazy island, the Brooklyn Navy Yard, which you can see from the boat, and like there's a whole lot of history there with like commerce and international, um, um, trade and whatnot, like from the early years of being new, uh, a new land and like New Amsterdam yeah. days. There's so much to talk about. L- me saying I don't know anything about the East Side and then listing a hundred things. Yeah, you're just like, <laughs> and also this and that East Side. And I'm like, basically wow. what I'm saying is. I'm coming for this guy's job. Um, but he was Truly. talking about birth rates and yeah, and 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 uh, um, and 9 11, dude, like, like 17 ex- times. I mean, literally, that it was excessive. Like, of course, you can't talk about lower Manhattan without of talking course, about, talk about it, please. But, but it was like every five minutes. Um, but then he was talking about like the woman who was arrested for and jailed for 46 years because she was promoting birth control. And yeah, like, I was like, "What are you like, talking?" What is this? I, and if it had something to do with the East Side, I missed it because we were, but we were sitting there pretty attentively. Like, what are you talking about? Yes, and honestly, to the chagrin of all the old people around us, they fucking hated. Us. Oh my god, the people next to us—I don't know where they're from. They're definitely they, from Europe somewhere. They hated. And they, us. the guy, just looked at me for like twenty-five like, minutes. He would not stop looking at me for twenty-five minutes because we were sitting there giggling about how stupid this was. We I was were like, like, "Are you? Are you sexist? Are you like?" Like, are you are you uh do you sound like gay people like what's going on like, you know what i mean like he just it yeah no so he pointed. just i don't think he was either i just think he was he was anti-fun he wanted to have a quiet oh, day and oh, he that. did not and he did not get that um, he wasn't a funyan yeah, but then the <laughs> who doesn't love a funyan but then the other the other part that was cracking us up that kind of like i think tipped our our boat over like you know proverbially tipped our boat over <laughs> Was when we if got only. up to East Harlem and we couldn't go any further past the the Farazana, not the Farazana, the Triborough Bridge, whatever it's called now. Yeah. The Robert F. Kennedy Jr., whatever the fuck bridge. Job, job and, Steve Jobs uh, Bridgeathon. It's, it's the Triborough. It will always be the Triborough Bridge. Facts. We get up there and the guy's like, um, we can't go any further. Now, mind you, this was a three hour cruise that was supposed to circum circumnavigate Manhattan. We were supposed to go all the way around Manhattan. Is circumnavigate the word for that? Whatever it was. We were supposed to go from yeah. 42nd Street around all the way up Manhattan. the East River, around, all the way past Inwood, down the west side under the GWB, back down to 42nd Street. And we get over to the Triborough Bridge. <laughs> and this guy's like, hey, guys, just, uh, I, th- I guess they said it in the beginning and we missed it. But he was like, just so you know, like, we're going to have to turn around now because the water is too high. Because it's high tide, and so it's high, and so it's too yeah, high for us to. That. He kept saying it was too high, and I like I was like, girl, I think you're high, but yeah, also baby. we were and and please, if somebody knows, put it in the comment section somewhere. Yes, yeah, schedule. Why? Uh, because like, because in, in my mind, it's like you're a boat. I'm pretty sure you were designed to deal with high tide, low tide. I could understand. Maybe you're like a little absolutely, too deep to get through. but like if we're at high low tide. tide. And like the boat isn't that 
tall. You know, it's not like it's so high that we're going to crash into the Triborough Bridge. Like, it's, it's not like that. So no, if, it is, if it is, we're dead because the apocalypse has come. Yeah, um, yeah, it's too late for us. But, yeah. like, you, but like, you're a boat that's made for water. And water so if we're boat. in high tide in water, why can we not keep going? And, like, I, I don't know. I no I, there is obviously an answer to this. I don't know. Um, and so right. we turned back around and the commentary kept going. But then oh my God, we better. stopped paying attention. We were doing like a whole TikTok photo shoot thing on the top deck. And we get to the As west side. Does. In the rain. Yeah. In the rain. Freezing cold. We in get heels. Back, in, in platforms. Heels. I was literally. Right. Same. And we get back to the west side and we pass 40 seconds. We go up a little bit of the upper west side so we can like kind of make up for the fact that we didn't go all the way around. Um, and I, I don't even think we went to like 100th Street. We might have been at like 96 no. or something like that. No, it we was didn't the even see the little red lighthouse. We no, no, we didn't. That. We saw it from where we were, but it was very <clears> far <throat> in the distance. Um, yeah. We got to like the boat basin. So that's like 79th mm-hmm. Street on, on the west mm-hmm. side. And he's <laughs> going up. He's like, do you guys see that really ugly building over there? Yes. Do you see that really ugly building right there? The white one. The one that's shaped like a triangle. It's a pyramid. It's so ugly. <laughs> and that was that the was end it. Of it. But like also, that was the whole neighborhood. That was the whole thing. But like also, dude, like that that building was was designed after a sailboat on forty. It's a fifty seventh and eleventh, I think. There's a movie theater on the first floor that's like a restaurant. It's very cool. It's it was modeled after a sail for a sailboat. Mm-hmm. And so like when you know that, it's like kind of cool. Like oh yeah, yeah, I totally see it. Cool. Tell and me more. Then, yeah. And then he was talking about how like that big tall skinny building on 57th that's like way like way further in that you can see from the water is like on billionaires row and he was like they just sold the most expensive property in New York City history for a billion dollars and I was like they didn't that's that's didn't. not that's not a thing. That's not I think how much the, of apartment I think the goes. most that's expensive No, I was like I think the most expensive apartment that New York City has ever sold was like 120 million dollars, which is still yeah. entirely too much. <laughs> but that is a far cry from a billion. Yeah, it's just not correct. No, and so this guy's like <laughs> and then he's like and that apartment's going to sit empty because you see that building? Oh, None of so, those okay. apartments are full. Right. So what was so crazy is I know this he literally points to the like, I think parts of Hudson Yards, and he's like, at, at night, everybody asks me, why are the lights out? Mm. And that's because nobody's living there. And I'm like, no, you fucking moron. That's because that's an office building. Like and literally, when he was pointing to it's I've been in that office building. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, well, and because- also <clears throat> No, sorry, I was just gonna say I fact checked myself. So um the this guy ken griffin griffin who's a founder of a hedge fund paid a record 238 million dollars for a penthouse okay. condo on central park south um right. 220 central park south so okay. like before that that's not a billion dollars yeah, that's so. not a billion dollars that is a far cry from a billion dollars so like a quarter of a billion okay sure but that's still not a billion. It's it's not it's not the same. And will that guy live in that apartment? Sure, I don't know. And sure. do we ha- do we have a problem in the city with empty apartments that are bought by people who don't live here? Absolutely. But it sure. just was like this misrepresentation to a bunch of people who don't like live eight, here. Eight million of us at least, nine million, ten million still live here. Like there's people yeah, here. Yeah, it's yeah. not like it's like no, of course. Town. But, but like, yes, but there's like, a problem. There with- are empty properties. He's not wrong about that. But it was yeah. just the scope in which he was speaking sure. about it that I was like, dude, dude, bro, man. Like, no. And it just was so... And then and then he was also telling everyone that Richard Nixon had a funeral in New York City. Thank you. I was at, just going to bring that up. At Riverside uh, Cathedral, church, whatever it is, up on 120th. Yeah, like, what do you say? Like, Richard Nixon had his funeral in New York? Like, what the fuck? At River, well, he's like, any, everybody has a funeral at Riverside. And I was like, first of all... <laughs> oh, what killed, what killed me was that when he started talking about it, he was like... <laughs> It's like, you see that building over there? The scaffolding is like, nothing sinister going on under that scaffolding. Oh, it's my God. And it wasn't sinister Church. at all. We were like, <laughs> what are you talking about? That's clearly it's construction. <laughs> it's just a building getting built, bro. Or at least have like. Repaired. Getting clean. Who knows? Like, no, nothing it was, sinister was No, the, the scaffolding was on Riverside Church, which is why he started talking about it. Oh, um, well, shut up. It was the same thing, but it was just like, what is happening? It was so unhinged. <laughs> 
but it was so funny it was so- and we were yeah. like we had the best time we were also drunk and like <laughs> yeah. drunk on a boat on the hudson listening to some yeah. some old dude like butcher new york city facts yeah and history. <laughs> depress us to death yeah yeah mm-hmm. which like if you if my og is remember my original tiktok like that's all i did so like you picked the wrong one girl like, iconic iconic um, and really what I think I'm, again, I'm trying to say is that I just want his job. <laughs> yeah, I think we all do. I think it was, um, it was amusing city circle line, get it, get it the fuck together. Get it the yeah, fuck together. Yeah. I, I just don't know. I just was so confused about the blatant topic <clears throat> changes and like how adult and like harsh they were. And then he was just like, yeah, about women. He's like women. I'm like, uh Oh, here we go. He's like back in the day. Women would tell each other two numbers. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And they're like, and I was like, <laughs> what? he goes, how many kids they had and how many kids died of tuberculosis. I did not hear that part. What the fuck? You missed it. I think you were like on the roof being like, and that was the first time I didn't go on the roof with you, but the second time I did I was or whatever. Like, it was like you were outside. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> also, I don't want to get pneumonia. So I stayed inside. That too. But, um, but then I went back out. I immediately went out yeah, just yeah, like yeah. after a drink later. But um, yeah, he literally said that. He was like, women would tell each other two numbers, how many children they had. And to, and I was like, I, I, remember, I don't understand why you're saying this. No, like, me neither. Well, and I remember the part where he was saying the average woman in the early part of the 1900s had like 10 children. 10, yeah. I remember that part. That the, What you're talking about must have come after that because it was so like. I think I stopped. But why are you telling that. us this? Right. Well, and because again, that was the what does East that do River. New York really like? Right. We're in the East River, and that was like I was like, what does birth rate have anything to do with the East River? What did like he wasn't talking about the Lower East Side tenements? Like we'd passed that. No, I know. I was waiting for that. We're at, like Tudor City, UN territory. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So, like the birth rate, and also that chick got. In prison, I don't, I don't want to say her name. He literally, I said, I don't want to say her name because people don't like her. I'm like, I don't even know who you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. Point. But also, like, <laughs> I want to look this up too. There's an island in the East River um, mm-hmm. that you can't go to. Um, I mean, so let's go. It? Okay, so it's on. Uh, uh, yes. Okay, I think this is it. It's an abandoned island. I remember reading about this years ago, um, and I was going to do a TikTok about it, but then I was like, I don't want to go out to that island and get arrested because the Coast Guard will come for you. Um, oh, yikes. but it's called yeah. it's uh, North Brother Island and South Brother Island. Um, <laughs> you can get <laughs> creative. You can get permission from the New York City Department of uh, Parks and Rec, but then okay. like access is only granted in very rare cases. Um, but those two islands are in the East River, and you can, in fact, see them. We passed them. And it was like, how about a little commentary on this? Let's talk about that. And let's talk about how once upon a time some guy canoed out there, and he was, like, like not shot down, but he was, like, picked up by the Coast Guard in, like, a helicopter wow. or something. Wow. Like there's like this that's what makes me so confused about this whole thing. Yeah, there's like what so do we many pay things for it to be like you could have talked about? Was it a test? What was there a camera? Was it a somewhere? patient's like... test? Right. We were all getting punked. <laughs> yeah. Ashton Kutcher like... has nothing else to do now that he's been canceled. So he's punking. People oh my again. God. He's getting yeah, please. But yeah, no, like truly, like it was so unhinged. It was like, are we being watched? Like, is everyone else experiencing this with yeah. us? Like are we okay? Are we okay? Yeah. yeah. It was very it's yeah, it's very strange. But anyway, so sure. like, I'm glad we did it. We had a great time. I'm so yeah, grateful for the friends that were that are in my life, but then specifically more yeah. so were, that were present, yourself included. Um, yeah. Because it was a re- this year was really hard. It was a really weird fucking year for me. Um, in uh, really the last two years. Um, and last year at this time, I was out in Paris having a complete mental breakdown and crisis about my life. And then also my book got published. So it's been a very roller coaster of a year. Um, my book mm-hmm. was my book hit stores two days before my birthday, which is my cancer survivor wow. anniversary. There was just a whole lot going on in that period of time. <laughs> you know, I got fired from a tour. <laughs> it was just yeah. a whole thing. And so, like, I really didn't plan anything for my birthday this year until last minute at Bobby's suggestion because he's a great friend. Yeah. Um, because I was like, I don't know how I compete with Paris and last year because it was so 
segregated where it was like all this sure, bad different. shit was happening mm-hmm. and but then I was also in Paris I felt like I was being gaslit by myself <laughs> yeah you're like <laughs> I was like, what is happening? Marie Antoinette? Um, is that you? I have so many pictures with her portrait and her furniture. Oh, God. She's so um, iconic. <clears throat> but, you know, uh, and I, I said this to the kids on the on the tour before I left, and I stand by this, is like the worst, whatever feels like the worst thing to ever happen to you in the long run will be made clear to you that it was the best thing that ever happened to you. Yes. And I don't remember if I've said this on this podcast before. But like, I say that I talk about that with cancer all the time. It's the best thing that ever happened to me because even though it was terrible while it was happening, everything that's come out of it since then, like myself being proactive about it, of course, but like everything that's come out of it, I don't know what I'd be doing right now if I didn't have cancer. Like I wouldn't have a book. There would be no adaptation of TV. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing. And I think about that a lot where it's like I w- at the time, you know, we were talking about this today <clears throat> or the other day when we were going through the deck. But at the time, I was so angry that all of these great opportunities that were coming my way were impossible for me to say yes to because I was stuck in a hospital bed. And I was watching wow. everyone else I knew go do shows and be fabulous and do everything that I wanted to do. And I was stuck in a hospital and I was so angry and I tried so hard not to be because I knew it had nothing to do with them. And it would have been so easy to stick to that narrative. But now, had that not happened, I don't know what the fuck I'd be doing. Like, where, really, where would I be? What purpose would I have? (laughs) I'd be, like, bartending with my thumb up my ass somewhere, being like, please pick me for your job. I need a job. Well, that's very, um, that's very unsanitary, but I feel that for you. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. Well, it is. if you've ever worked behind a bar. They call that a, a you know an old fashioned with a twist, you know. So <laughs> it's a rusty, anyway, it's a rusty old fashioned, <laughs> rusty trombone, um, the rusty venture. But anyway, so I really think that that's a really interesting way, also like healthy way to look at anything that's happened to us. Like I, I can feel, I can say the same thing about. I mean, your divorce. divorce. Like, Where the fuck would yeah, you be if you didn't I mean, divorce that guy? Literally, as soon as I got divorced, like my show got on Amazon, I got the best shape of my life. I started to like book this and that. And then it was like, oh my God. Like, and you know what really prepared me for that though was my mom's cancer battle twice. I was like, if I can get through almost losing my favorite human being of all time. Yeah. Boy, bye. Bye. You not that good anyway. So like (laughs) That's the thing. It's just, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, and I think that it's also the things that happen to us in life. It's, I think it's our right to say whether it was worth it or not. I think it's our call. Right. And it's, it's subjective to us. Like I get upset when people are like, oh, but it's a bad thing. You shouldn't like make a da 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 or like my experience. Great. Your experience. Mine is different. Yeah. My divorce was fab. I felt so good about it afterwards. It was, I was like, oh, wow. Um, that's about it. And like my mom's cancer battle was terrible, but it also, it got us so much. It, we were already very close, but it, it showed me what a badass she was. And it showed her what a badass she is, you know, helping my, helping my grandfather pass away on hospice. Like I was the family member that had to like do that, that prep, that was before even the mom stuff. And I yeah. think all of those things, I think about these really ups to people like really traumatic, tra- but to me, they just leveled me up as a person. Yeah. I mean, and that's, you know? that's how you have to look at it. In my opinion, that's how one has to look at those things that happen because it's like, this sucks right now, but in a couple years, it's all going to make sense. And, you right. know, granted mine took a decade, but like, you know, it all makes sense now. Because but that's only a ten year old little kid. You're 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 a baby. <laughs> My immune system is ten years old. Um because it's brand new. Uh yeah, yeah. it's it's really It really is kind of strange looking back to Brooke, my friend, my bestie Brooke, uh texted me today this Facebook post that I put up 12 years ago. Like this time 12 years ago. Which was literally, literally a month and a half before I started chemo. So I would have had a huge tumor under my arm at this point. 
And it uh. just blew my mind because I remember it was an innocuous kind of stupid post, but like someone I was in the cast with the show I was doing at the time was tagged and she was tagged because I had just seen her doing the same show. And, and it just blew my mind. I was like, how has 12 years passed since yeah. that moment? And it really like gave me a second to look back and be like, in the in those 12 years, I have done so many things and yeah. I have accomplished so many things. And my mom used to tease me all the time. She was like, you've done enough for five people. And I'm like, but it's not right. enough. <laughs> it's not enough, mom. Um, yeah. And it relatable really, content. It, yeah. yeah. It really makes me kind of like take a pause for myself on this, you know, month of my birth to uh to really kind of appreciate the fact that the shit that I've had happen to me and that has been done to me and that I've experienced have all kind of like come out in the wash to land me right here and so that's kind of even though things are still in a little bit of a turmoil flux, flux situation right now like that's kind of the thing that's making me feel like it's all right because whatever exactly. happens next is going to make the version of you tomorrow that's so true. And, and I we think love that's her. so we love her. We love her. But daddy, I time. love him. But daddy, I love him. Um, but no, seriously, that's such a great way. I I, I found that my biggest strength and what makes I, I think makes me feel successful or has gotten me any success is how we adapt to <clears throat> things that happen and how do we learn? How do we evolve from those things, regardless of our participation in them whatever happened i really truly believe we always have something to learn and if that's what we take with it how can we not just be better versions of ourselves and be yeah. beyond well you know? it takes work i mean it's not just something that you can look at and be like oh okay like it it's it's an everyday moment like oh. there was a you know how your phone well you're Okay, iPhone users, you know, <laughs> when your phone oh, gives you like that, that, sorry, it's a cult. Um, you know yeah. how like you get that photo of the day thing or like your phone has created this montage yeah. for you to look at. Um, yeah, Mike says I, that, okay? He's like, yeah, 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 well, because he's insane. Um, <laughs> I said it. <laughs> anyway, you're, you have the cute okay, little flip Steve phone. Steve Jobs, whatever, suck um, him up. I don't really care. Truly, he's dead. <laughs> don't yeah. speak of the dead, though. He is. <laughs> He don't, is. <laughs> don't blow the don't blow the dead that way um yeah no, no, no. the um so this mo this little photo memory came up and it was me i think i want to say like maybe six or so months after i was like told the cancer was gone so i would have been like 26 years old <laughs> and my hair oh my god it was just <laughs> <clears throat> it was about the length that it is now okay. but it was like wavy and volume voluptuous and voluminous on the top mm -hmm. and it had these little like tiny ringlets on the side and i was like Warm. oh my god i thought at that moment that my hair was gonna stay that way forever and i was like oh i have wavy hair now she's a wavy hair bitch <laughs> and like <laughs> after the first fucking haircut i got <laughs> <laughs> you were like my friend Jeremy who cut my hair for years and years and years and he's the one who cut my hair <clears throat> when it started to fall out because of chemo um I wanted him to be my first haircut and so he came over to my apartment he cut my hair and after that it, there was no wave there was no volume there was no voluptuousness ever again. was my that hair, chemo hair it was so this is that's the thing that happened so I was told in the very beginning, as once my hair started to fall out, they're like, yeah, that happens. And it was like, okay, okay. I, like, they they so ill-equipped me for so many things, but that's the one oh, thing. Oh, yeah, they didn't tell my mom jack shit. We were they just like, wait, what? That's yeah. a thing? Literally why I wrote my book, Cancer Musical Theater and Other Chronic Illnesses, go buy it. Um, go buy it. They were like, your hair's either going to come back really wavy or curly, or it's going to come back white. And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, actually, it happens more commonly with Asian people that their hair comes back white. And I was like, okay, what well, a what a look. Honestly, a, that's kind of that's kind iconic. Of I know. Yeah. There wasn't there's not a shred of Asian in me at all. Um, well, not anymore. <laughs> and uh <laughs> wink wink. <laughs> and uh I hoped so hard to have that happen. I wanted white wings. Oh my god, hair. I want that. I was oh like, can god. I have the Anderson Cooper? Can I have the like what but nope, nope, it lasted one haircut and then I went back to being pin fucking straight. <laughs> Damn. Damn. 
Oh man, it's such like it's so funny thinking back about all this stuff. And I don't want to make this whole episode about me, even though it is my birthday episode, and it is. That's no, literally me. your birthday. You can. I can. Uh, but um. But also it, me. <laughs> but also me. <laughs> no, no. no <laughs> but it's you and me, but mostly me. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's really funny, like looking at those those like early years straight out the hospital, like the way that I looked and like how everyone was like, you look so hot now. And I was like, cause I almost died. Yeah, um, cause I'm half dead. Right. Which yeah. is really just a commentary yeah. on, uh, society and the problems, society's body dysmorphia issue that they have. Ew. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. But I anyway. love how we both have like a fantasy with like white ass hair. Like I literally have talked about this in high school. I was like, I want to be a woman at 97 with the whitest white hair like oh, the yeah. driven fucking snow you and have i to want meet barbara. straight you have i to want meet it my so barbara. straight okay done my, my barbara meet. my barbara has short little hair it is pure white and it's like spiked and combed over she's the most fabulous human ever um okay well i mean i need to meet your barbara you need to and meet my i barbara. also i want to be wearing prada heels or louboutins or some shit and walking down fifth avenue with a cat on a leash and i just want that is my vision for 96 that is yeah, what i you, want you need to meet barbara um okay, <laughs> it's one i think it's subconsciously one of the reasons why i'm so like connected with brooke because like brooke mm. brooke martino love her so much she's my life wife um she has uh this white streak of gray that goes through the front of her hair and when I was 19 years old, I paid someone who I worked with, she was a hair stylist, I paid her under the table to go to her place in Brooklyn and have my hair dyed so that I would have a white strip in the front. I wanted to be Rogue from X-Men so badly. Oh, yeah. And um, it never yeah. happened. I mean, look, my beard is white as shit. It's, yeah, like, you're, it's I never love, been I this white it, before. Though. It's so I, dope. I wish, I, I like it like it is right now i mm -hmm. wish that it would make up its mind and just go full white oh all right all right or or like or like i'm gonna dye it i'm not because that always looks terrible but like no don't do that ew oh god yeah no know, but ew. like look Some at people... how look at how white that is like i used to just have like one or two little hairs in my chin a couple years ago and, and now this I'm isn't white. a this isn't a this isn't a brag or anything but i've never had a white hair yet I think I had one oh. that I thought was one and it came out of a scar. And I was like, oh yeah, that's the fucking one that's always, but <laughs> it's because of my genes. My grandmother at 94 barely had any white or gray to her hair at all. And it was brunette this, it was this. That I bitch. was blown <laughs> away. Yeah, Grandma Ellie, Eleanor Irvin. Hey girl, through. shout out. Shout um, out to Eleanor. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know. I, I've always like, I wanted gray hair before I wanted a gray beard. I love a gray beard. Oh, I get what you're saying. But like, I I wanted like the temple. I wanted the, the temple dusting. Oh. And that yeah. hasn't really happened. I've had like weird really? straggly like white hairs up in here, but then they always like go away. Um, And as soon, one of the first things I thought about too, when I had my first hair transplant, because I've had two of them, if you don't know, we're very transparent yeah. about this. Um, was that all when the were hair? Those? When did you have those? Uh, the first one was, I believe, 2015, mm -hmm. like May, May of 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah, May of 2015. And then the second one was New Year's, two days before New Year's. They called me, they're like, We have an opening. I was like, I'm on my way, I'm in a taxi. Um, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I and I think that was New Year's of twenty going into twenty seventeen. I was gonna say going into twenty twenty. I was like, you fucking bitch, you ruined everything with your hand. It was my fault. No, no I definitely no. want to do more of them. But I that was one of the first Does things I thought is like, oh my god, exponentially they give you drugs. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, it's god. a lot. Um, imagine someone takes um a a um a sheet of barbed wire and presses it into your head <laughs> for days oh my I mean... god saturday please 
talk about a story <laughs> culture baby sign me um, up no i'm just kidding no that sounds terrible to me it no, was terrible. terrible um i didn't yeah, actually need the painkillers it wasn't so bad the first time the second time i was a little bit more of a bitch about it aren't you allowed um, not to have like and that's the opposite of what i just said are you not allowed there we go to have uh advil or any blood thinning stuff for like weeks or something isn't that like a thing or have i made that, that up? no that is the thing for people who have major surgeries i don't think this qualifies i don't remember there being oh, okay. any specific stipulation about that um but i saw the stand-up is... comedian talk about it and he was like i couldn't have advil for three weeks i'm like what how it's possible. deep was your hair I mean, transplant do you they get it out of your real... liver like no they have a they give you a real deep cut on the back of your head you get like a free facelift because like they cut oh. hair out of back here of the back of your head all of this to say that when they cut that hair out that's always the hair that goes gray first in my family and so I was like, oh, my God, we're moving the gray hair up to the front. So maybe I will get a robe. Ooh, just right. what you wanted. Just what I wanted. It hasn't happened. That's yet. a horse of a different color. <laughs> There's no place like home. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so that's like it, that might be a thing. I don't remember if it is a thing. That's I know right. that like they cut the hair out from the side and the back and then they individualize each hair and then they like push it into your scalp with a needle <laughs> it's quite a barbaric process there's literally oh a nurse God. there's a nurse who's, whose job it is to like like poke holes in your scalp to make a place for the hair follicle and the doctor stands there and counts them and then there's another nurse with a napkin who like wipes the blood off your head as it like swoops down it's a lot <laughs> but then they have to stitch this like cut closed and it's like a facelift because like this they're closing the skin it's like a little tiny like, little like Ew. yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah that's so I, I feel like i feel like at some point i'm going to like skew this story and be like i've had two facelifts and two hair transplants <laughs> you better believe like, huh? look at like that bitch you should go back and get a refund <laughs> yeah, they're like they're like from who bitch from the who? barbara seville no please oh, please tell me so i don't go there yeah but it was i would listen i i'm pro scientifically enhancing the way that you look in order to feel better about yourself 100 percent. and when i and, do do it i'll let you guys know totally and on top of that not to tie not to tie this in too close to the whatever you want to call it i don't know what the expression is i've had too much bourbon sure. <laughs> i'm now at the point where i'm just talking yeah. um that <laughs> that to me is gender affirming care Ah, having I get a hair that. transplant made me feel like a more attractive man, and so that I get is, that. in my opinion, gender affirming care, as is Viagra if you choose to use or need to use, as mm -hmm. is breast implants, as in lip fillers or face fillers. All of that is gender affirming care. So, anyway. I I like that. I do too. Yeah, and I and I always say I've had uh, tons of plastic surgery because. When I was a baby, you know the story. I got my face ripped apart by a dog. <gasps> you too? Right? Do you, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't know about this? No. Wait, have we not talked about this? Because I also had my face ripped apart by a dog. What? Stop it, listeners! You're getting this in That's real this, time. I never right noticed here, this that. This little I've left is um is part of ninety stitches I had in my baby head. And they had to seal both my cheeks. Oh they had to seal God. my forehead. They had to seal, and I push on my chin, you can see lines. But when I rub my tongue around the inside of my mouth, it's like a map. Wow. I'm not kidding. And then my hair, you can see the the giant scar. See it right there, faint? It's that one oh, right shit. there. Okay. It goes all over my head because he it he tore apart my my scalp and he also tore out two teeth that run under my gum so i had no teeth here as a kid i was like hey no strings to hold me down like the whole time as a kid i was like it's a hard life. Oh, <laughs> like oh, every single God. photo of me is like you um but what's so crazy and this is why i believe That's in like wild. i don't know this is why i believe in like something something's going on you know what i mean uh is that my little baby body um, it was my aunt's dog and she was babysitting me and it was my parents' first time going out since I'd been born. Oh God, the anxiety the they must have. 
Oh yeah. My dad said he slept with me. I have to fall asleep on his chest first for like an hour. And then he would set me in my crib because he was like, I can't leave you alone for some, I don't know. I'm like absolutely freaked out. Yeah. So my aunt called the called like, you know, the ambulance, the dog just randomly viciously attacked my face and just gar started to go crazy ape shit. And my aunt was like, fuck that dog, kill that dog. Like she was like, I was seeing that do it to her baby. She was like, that dog is not, <laughs> not good. That dog is um, not it. But what was so crazy is I was lifelighted to a hospital by helicopter. And of course, my parents come back and there's caution tape and blood everywhere and police. And they're like, what the fuck? And <laughs> we leave you with her well, for one minute. <laughs> yeah, they're like, damn it. And what I feel so bad is like my Aunt Barb, who I adore, she, uh, she is a lady about town. She loves boyfriends. She's like in almost 70, I think. She's just, she has never had kids, traveled everywhere and batty. Anyway, she still hugs me, I feel like, a little bit longer, you know, than Aww. some other people just because she's just like, I can't believe we weren't through this and you were, like, so small. And, again, I was 10 months old um, and I was lifelighted to the hospital. But here's where it's so crazy. The number one child uh, child plastic surgeon for kids in car accidents and, like, blah, 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 had just finished, like, a 17-hour surgery on, like, a toddler in a car accident and I come in and he's just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> and he put, I mean, I'm an actor. Like I don't, I mean, I, you're, he stu put you're my, a stunner. You're a stunner. He put my face back together and it was nothing that wasn't what I already was going to look like, but he reassembled. And did you have to have you know, surgeries put, like after that? No, baby skin heals like a fucking That's like true. I but I here's what is funny is it's not funny, but I think it's hilarious because I have dark humor. Uh on my first birthday, I'm a literal like a mummy. Like I'm like a kid. I'm like a kid who like I'm like a woman who just went to like Boca Raton and got her cheeks done, you know? Oh and she's God. like <laughs> and it's like so ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that happened to me. That was a dog. That was a that's dog. Crazy. Was Irish setter, German shepherd mix. My dad, when he got back, he was just like, cool. I'm going to kill that dog. And then my mom was like, no, we, we have to like let it go somewhere else. So they gave it to a farm out in, out west, like a like a Wyoming, whatever. I was like, sure, he took down half the family and all the sheep before he we went down, right. I'm sure. But <laughs> my aunt, whose dog it was, was like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, it's like, let's 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 end this shit. It, it oh, hurt a no. baby. It tried to kill a baby. But anyway, no, it just went out there. Probably died. I mean, it's been dead for like 20 years, I'm sure. But. Or maybe more, 25, That's whatever. Fucked. Well, I mean, dogs are notoriously not good with children unless they're trained otherwise. Like, that's just right. like a thing, you know? Like, I've, right. I've had experiences walking my friend's dogs when, like, kids run up to the dog and try to pet it and the dog loses it. It's like, stop bringing your fucking kid over <laughs> to the fucking animal. Yeah. Stop. Uh, so anyway. You got attacked by a dog. You I said. did. I was, I think, maybe four or five. It was definitely before I started school. Um, it's one of my earliest memories. And our neighbors next door had this beautiful Alaskan husky named Buddy. And he was always chained up to the big tree outside. Like, always. I don't know what level they were taking care of him. I don't really know. But That's they had yeah. a son who was older. I want to say he was maybe 10 to 12 or something. I don't know. We didn't really know them that well. But our houses were pretty close to each other. We probably had maybe like, I don't know, 20 feet between us. And we knew them. They were We were cool with them, like whatever. And one day I decided to wander outside because I saw that I was on the back porch and I saw that the dog was out. And I, was, I wanted to go pet him and play with him because he was like this cute little fuzzy little Alaskan husky. And I went over to him and... You know, the dog is bigger than me, obviously. And I reach yeah, up to pet him and he like puts his paws up on my shoulders because he's excited to see me and he licks my face. But in licking my face, his tooth got stuck in my nose and ripped my skin clean up to my forehead. And so the neighbor kids were like goading him or whatever. And then I ran inside and I am bleeding everywhere. My poor dad and mom. Um, 
Ugh. bleeding everywhere. They take like washcloths and they like put it on my face and they drive me to the Good Samaritan Hospital nearby, which was not the right decision, but it's the, it was the closest thing. We lived out in the middle of farm country. Like it's a 40 oh, minute drive to like whatever. We lived in the middle of nowhere. Like Amish farms on all sides for the most part. And uh, this surgeon gets flown in and he's like sitting there playing with my skin and my mom is like flush she leaves into the hallway she's gonna like pass out or throw up or something and so she's sitting out there with my sisters and uh. my dad was somewhere i don't remember where i know he was there and <laughs> i'm just like laying on this hospital bed like waiting for someone to do anything and finally what they ended up doing was they stitched it shut and brought it to like a little head on the tip of my nose and then i had these stitches in for a long time and what they told us was that when i'm like 13 or 14 and my nose grows in that I should have that shaved off because then it won't leave what? as much like the scar. I should have the scar shaved. Yeah. Off yeah. Yeah. They stitched it. And yeah. I ended up never doing it. And you can't really tell, but like, if you look a little closely, I can't. listeners, there's like a little knot right on my nose. Oh, I right see. There. Yeah, yeah. You see it? That's like my little. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, you, it's so tiny, but it's like just this little like boop. Oh, but I don't was, even. Yeah. Yeah. It just looks like a birthmark. Wow, why are we the same? We're Woman. so weird. <laughs> but yeah, I don't Why? know what happened. I don't know what happened to the neighbors or buddy. I had a really big fear of dogs for a really long time after that. Oh, yeah, because you remember it. I didn't remember mine. Oh, yeah, I remembered it. So. I remembered his teeth in my face um, looking into his mouth. <laughs> As a three or four year old, like that's scary. Um, well, that's I actually don't thing. know how it's old like... I was. I should ask my parents. But um, you should. Well, I'm sure your dad's listening. Dad, tell us. Dad, write in the comments. How old was I when I was? But when Daddy, my face got chewed we loved off. him. <laughs> yeah. Dad, how old was I when my face got chewed off by the neighbor's dog? Um, well, I think <laughs> this is an interesting way to wrap up your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> We're both telling our dog attacks. We're stories. such. So, this has so... been an unhinged episode, which totally. <laughs> Which plays, which plays in perfectly to the uh the unhinged theme yeah but um i have what a, a big beautiful f- time well it's le- it's also leaning into our spooky ookie cookie, our spooky ding, ding, cookie. episode coming up soon. Uh, episode yes. that's coming after this for halloweeny halloweeny i can't wait i'm so excited. i'm like not a halloween person anymore i used to be mm-hmm. i used to get really excited I love about halloween. it yeah. and then i stopped and then i i have gone through this phase where like I don't care. I'm too busy. I don't have time for it. And then the day of, I'm like, oh my God, I need to have a costume, even though I have nowhere <laughs> oh to God, go. Oh my God, Halloween matters. Oh my God, have, it's my favorite day. Right. Even though I have absolutely nowhere to go, I've made yeah. no plans. I've been invited nowhere. And I'm like, but yeah. I need to have a costume. And so this, what started this anxiety was <laughs> that exact same thing that I just explained where I needed to have a costume, even though I had nowhere to go. And I yeah. had gone through a thong phase. And I had this nude colored oh. thong. There's a picture of it. I'll I'll post it somewhere or send it to you or whatever. But I put on this nude colored thong and I have this red and gold and fur lined king's cape. It is huge. It's like eight feet long. Oh, the emperor's and whatever the clothes. the emperor's new clothes. Yeah, yeah. His new ones. Yeah. <laughs> his new ones. <laughs> right. His new clothes. Right. Not the old ones. <laughs> <laughs> the emperor's clothes right his new, clothes, right? His new, new ones his new, new ones. Ones. yeah, yeah. yeah it's fresh um fresh and stuff. so i i wore that out i wore that out in public and um i didn't go anywhere i just kind of walked around <laughs> you were I put was on too, some lists for I sure put, yeah I, I was probably put on a list um <laughs> you know but like i want one one year i will be brave enough to wear that out to a real place because the cape, the cape is big enough that I can just like cover my whole body until we get there and just like whoosh, whoosh caping. It off. Yeah, I think it's great. But um, but that's kind of what started that, and then it was like this whole oh. like roller coaster of like I don't have a costume, but I'm gonna put something together to take a picture and then be done with it and go to bed. Maybe this year will be different. I don't know. <laughs> I think it will. I mean, I'm trying to go back to Sleepy Hollow. I had such a good time last. I've last never time been there. there. Okay, I know. We, gotta, we need to go to Penny Town. We, we, need sh- to go. we should honestly this is this adds to the th- list of things i've d- never done as a new yorker even though i've lived here my entire adult life <laughs> i've still not done sleepy I am hollow so let's, of you yeah let's you add. need to go to Terrytown. we need to go to sleepy hollow i've well i br- very briefly dated someone from Terrytown, and then it was like Terrytown. 
Um, uh, this was a long time ago, but yeah, okay. let's do it. Well, let's pl- let's so plan a trip. Matter. Let's let's do it. Let's plan a trip to Terrytown, like soon, and then we can podcast it and like and then Instagram it and be like apple picking bitches. We're, we're actually me and Mike are trying to go to um Sleep House Cemetery. It's beautiful, and we might walk through. And is Christina Ricci there? I wish. Ugh. But William Depp? Irving is who wrote. Um, oh. And um, a lot of Rockefellers are there. There's a lot of really gorgeous crypts. Of course there are. Yeah. Love but anyway, anyway, that's how we're going to end our episode. So um, <laughs> happy birthday. See you next time. On Give the, me the uh... dollars. <laughs> See you next time on the Drunky Halloween special. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be, be so great. good. Give me the money. Put the money on the table. Put the money in my Halloween. Doctor. You're so rich. Uh, you have coins now.